Hi guys. Happy Wednesday. It's hump day. Happy hump day. Yes. Hi everybody. Um, today is Wednesday, January 25th and I have been guided to do I've been called to do a reading for the big old YouTube collective today. Spirit wants me to say that this is a, um, a kind of a, a peek, a, a view as to what you would get on Patreon. If you're interested in Patreon, it was not my intention to do a, promo a Patreon promotional video, but here we are. I'm going with the flow here. So spirit is saying, this is what, this is an opportunity of what you will most likely receive if you to if you sign up to join us on patreon uh link in the description box below it's as little as three dollars a month but i come in a few times a week maybe twice a week once or twice uh randomly i feel called to do it i sit down and start to channel a message i often sometimes i have something to start with other times like today I'm blank. So I'm feeling called to do it. So that's what we're going to do. All right. So this time, instead of Patreon, this time it's for YouTube, the YouTube collective. Hi guys. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Eric. It's very nice to meet you. And if you're returning, what's up squad? Yes. Oh my God. Yeah. Okay. So what's going on? How are you guys feeling? I will admit, I didn't sit and like try and channel anything. I just kind of, I've learned that I just want to like start the recording and let things flow because oftentimes things just start coming to me and I'm thinking about it in my head and then I have to remember once I press record. So I have a few decks here, but I want to start with the Energy Oracle deck and I'm going to give this two more shuffles. So this is a timeless reading, okay? Um, even though, you know, we're recording this on Wednesday, January 25th, 2023, it does not matter, okay? This could resonate for you at any time. This could be something you're going through. This could be something that you're dealing with for somebody. You may be cross-watching for somebody here, all right? You may be looking for information on a connection with a certain person, cross-watching for them and Hopefully you're getting, you're looking for information. You're looking to get information. Maybe you'll get some answers here in this reading. Okay. One more shuffle then. All right. So what's going on? I want to say we could be talking about love here. If you'd like a private reading, I am available. Check the information in the description box below. First card you have is card number 34, door, door to personal ha healing and happiness. Uh, number 34, which boils down to a seven. This one fell on the floor. We'll take it in a moment. It's no surprise that this card has come out here, door to personal healing and happiness. Um, what I'm being drawn to is the 34 aspect of it, the building blocks of the number seven. Um, and so what I'm picking up on so far is whomever this reading is for here, either you or the person that you're inquiring about, um, is dealing with certain circumstances, certain life circumstances that teaches them certain lessons that sets them up for success in the near future. And the focus on this session right now is to talk about those circumstances that are setting you up for success in the near future, which is ultimately opening up the door to personal happiness and healing for you. Healing and happiness, happiness and healing, whatever. Um, what's catching my attention now is a tarot deck that I just used for a personal reading that I have not cleared. I, it's not my intention to use this deck in this reading, so that's why I haven't cleared it. But the Seven of Pentacles, I'm not going to show you the deck, but the Seven of Pentacles is at the bottom of that deck. Um, and that's catching my attention. Uh, and again, 34, 7. Thir wow. And I just looked at the clock, you guys, and the timer on, the, on the, this reading just said 4.37. 
there's that four three energy and there's that seven seven is a big seven is a big number here and the big message so far for this reading is that for whomever this is meant for you need to understand that the difficult circumstances that you find yourself in at this time are literally the basic bl building blocks of the lessons you will ultimately learn and receive in the near future that will help you be successful moving forward in the future moving on I'm seeing the death card in my head right now. I'm hearing, understand that this is a transform this is a transformational process that you are in the middle of. You will survive, albeit different in the end, yes, but that is the point. Okay, you're meant to transform, you're meant to change, you're meant to be something more than who you were yesterday. And that phrase, that sentence, that statement in no way is meant to. Uh, kick someone to gear into gear or meant to make anyone feel like they have to do something they have to achieve this new state of being from when they were what they once were but it's not like that but in in the sense of this in the sense of the circumstances that you or this person are finding themselves in uh, regarding the fact that you seem to be overwhelmed by it or they seem to be overwhelmed by it or you're freaking out about it or you're wondering you're inqui you're inquiring simply could very well be this simple. You're just inquiring, why am I going through all this? It's setting you up for future success. It's setting you up. It's building the circumstances in your life that will ultimately lead to the opening of and the subsequent crossing into the realm of personal happiness and healing. That's why you're going through these circumstances. That's why I'm being drawn to the number 34, the basic building blocks of the number seven. Three plus four equals seven. Seven is a big number here for you. Seven is not about luck, even though it is, I mean, it's considered a lucky number, but luck is nothing but preparedness met with opportunity. So in order for you to even be in that seven state of being lucky enough to randomly happen upon the opportunity to use the tools that you've been honing for yourself, it's not random. You set yourself up for it. You were ready for the next moment you received the opportunity to use the tools that you have been developing over all of this time, over this time period. And you honed those tools because you knew you were destined to meet this opportunity again. Or your belief in having it led you to it. And thus you develop the tools to then use it when the opportunity comes. That is what seven is. That is what luck is. And that is what you are preparing for here, or this person, okay? There's one more card that came out face down and fell on the floor. We're gonna take it and it is reversed, that's right. And it's the thinking woman in reverse. This is the queen of swords in reverse energy. Ooh! And this flew off the table. Some of you are rejecting a f negative feminine energy. A negative feminine experience, a negative feminine circumstance, take it as it resonates however it resonates. If it doesn't resonate, if that doesn't make sense to you, throw it out the window. But there is some sort of overly critical energy or dynamic here that something that someone seems to be leaving behind. Because remember, this card came out and flew out on the floor. Some readers won't even take cards that fall out on the floor, but I will. I do. I listen to my intuition. If it tells me not to take it, I won't take it. This one I was told to take. And the reason it fell on the floor is because someone is rejecting this energy could very well be a masculine, could be a masculine in your life. I actually, the last Patreon reading that I did a few days from today, actually, actually, I think it was yesterday. Was it yesterday or was it the day before? Either a day or two, but f prior to the 25th of January um, was a twin flame reading ish. It was a reading about the masculine. And so actually this might be what we're talking about here because this feels like what we were talking about in that reading. So if you're not on Patreon, go ahead and check it out. For as little as $3 a month, you get access to everything. All, damn near everything I've ever done on Patreon. You, you basically get as much as I could give you access to because to give you full access to everything, I would have to go through hundreds of videos and change the settings and I just am not gonna do that. <laughs> so those are the earliest, earliest, but $3 a month, you get everything for as long as you remember. And some tiers actually give you either discounts on your personal readings if you're interested in that. One tier does give you one personal reading per month 
for $10 less than if you were to just order a random reading for me, okay? From me. Okay, so anyway, back to this. But I was talking about this on Patreon in the very last session that we had. The masculine, some in the, now this could be a specific masculine individual, whether you consider this to be your twin flame or um, just some sort of masculine counterpart that, or, that you have this romantic or this like push and pull dynamic with. This could also be the masculine and feminine energy within yourself. Um, but there is a masculine perspective that is rejecting some sort of overly critical, what is the um, antagonist energy? It's showing up as the feminine, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a woman. It's the dynamic of overcriticality. And this is why I'm saying this is uh, the Queen of Swords reverse, because there's a very real and strong difference, in my opinion, as a reader. There's a very real and strong difference between the King of Swords and the Queen of Swords. The King of Swords is the diplomat. The King of Swords is the type of energy that will... It, the King of Swords is Aquarius, okay? Uh, we'll, hear, we'll, we'll hear everyone out. We'll hear as many sides of the situation as are possible, or at least as are necessary. In some extreme dynamics, he will hear things until you turn blue in the face and still never make a decision. But ultimately, this is in terms of being able to make a decision, okay? That's the King of Swords, the diplomat, the whatever. Queen of Swords is cut and dry. The decision, this, either the decision has already been made or it's so clear and cut or she... The, the Queen of Swords is not one to deliberate. She doesn't care what other side has to say. Either it's fact and there's no debating it or she's not up for debate. She has made her decision. It's decided. That could be good given the circumstances, but if she's just choosing just because she's chosen, that could very well be the Queen of Swords in reverse without giving it a second thought, without giving it the proper understanding that it needs to make an accurate decision. That could very well be the Queen of Swords in reverse. Overly critical, judgmental. And, and overly critical and judgmental to a fault is what they're trying to say. So, okay, whether that be redundant or not, that's what I heard. Over judgmental, over critical to a fault. That's this Queen of Swords energy. And it seems that some sort of masculine perspective, masculine side, masculine individual is rejecting this, some, this type of energy. Uh, this, even if you are femininely dominant in your life, you could still be experiencing this because there is an a, 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 a expression of your own masculine energy coming up, welling up and saying, no, I say I'm putting a stop to this. In order to pursue happiness and healing. Seven. Now, would you look here? This card is card number four. I'm going to turn it upright just so you can see. It's card number 47. There's the seven again and another four. But this time, this equals 11. And I just saw one, two, four, three on the counter. Kind of one, two, three, four, but four, three. Still seven. Draw me, draw my, drew my attention dominantly to that 4-3 dynamic or 3-4 three, dynamic. 3 plus 4 equals 7. 7 is the number here. Skill, wisdom, understanding, honing your craft. I mean, yes, this is a lot of 8 of pentacles type of energy in a physical sense. But this is well, what spirit is saying, what spirit is getting to with this number 7 energy uh, is spiritual, maybe even energetic preparedness. Being ready to meet the circumstances on a spiritual level to have greater success and or to, uh, to succeed in the physical. Because ultimately, your physical reality is a direct reflection of the spiritual. It manifests energetically or spiritually first, and then it manifests in the physical. Then, when the momentum reaches a tipping point, it starts to spill into the physical and you will start to see physical representations of it. Where was I going with that? <laughs> let's get back here. Okay. So, let's talk about... Now, let's talk about the thinking woman in reverse. Now, for some of you, this is an energy within yourself. You are releasing some sort of... Mm, scorned woman energy. Scorned feminine. Scorned female. What, what is the... Whatever. You know what I'm saying. You may be releasing that aspect within yourself, and it is your masculine that is welling up inside of you. And I'm saying that specifically, welling up. For somebody here, it just feels like this masculine, this masculinity is just bubbling up from out of nowhere within them, and is saying, 
and is dominant and is saying, no, this is wrong. And is saying it to this feminine situation. Let's talk about this thinking woman in reverse. Two more shuffles here. Now, what I'm seeing in the thinking woman is it is that number 47, and that boils down to 11. And what I'm seeing in 11 is a gateway. This gateway cannot be open if this feminine energy is not in balance. Literally getting this feminine energy in balance is part of acquiring the key to step through this gateway. What is this gateway? The door to personal healing and happiness. Boop. <laughs> okay. Two more shuffles here then. The thinking woman in reverse. This absolutely could be a man. A man who is dominantly masculine. I am seeing a black man. I don't know why. Not that it matters, but I'm seeing a black man uh, watching this video and watching it and recognizing this pattern and seeing and, and, his, uh, and his, this is someone who is dominantly masculine. And maybe I'm seeing, maybe it's being translated as a black man this way because for me, I have, um, oh gosh, this might be TMA, but TMI, but I, 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 as a black man, as an effeminate black man, have a kind of, ha grew up as a child of a fear of uh, black men because of the um, strong homophobia within the black community and me being dominantly effeminate ever since I was a very young, <laughs> young child, you know, and having difficulty hiding that, I kind of, I had a fear. So maybe that's why this is being, it's this power, it's this twist, it's this dominant masculine energy, this maybe even hyper masculinity that is now softening and being able to correct his feminine side to bring the two of them in balance. Now, I'm not saying that the feminine getting, turning up right now and being healed in a sense is gonna just give you that key. No, there's still gonna be work to do from there to continue the balance between the masculine and the feminine. But right now we're focused on turning this feminine upright. And this could be a man or a masculine energy or a dominantly masculine individual, someone who may even be very material, um, um, yes, materialistic, but um, militaristic, uh, is, is, is softening, is starting to bring themselves into balance, is starting to heal, is starting to want to heal. And right now he is working on his feminine side. And this individual may have mommy issues. You may be recognizing, or this person may be recognizing these mom said supposed mommy issues. There could be a very toxic dynamic between him and his or her, take, because this could be a woman who is dominantly masculine. And this would be a woman who is dominantly masculine because she needed to protect herself. But um, between him or her and their mother, there could be some sort of twisted, twisted painful, toxic dynamic there, okay? And that could be a, a, a lens from which you are recognizing this twisted, toxic, feminine energy within yourself. Or this person is recognizing this, okay? Whew. Dominantly masculine, though, Spirit is saying. Last shuffle. And then we'll look at... Okay, there we go. Last shuffle, indeed. Ten of Cups is at the bottom of the deck. This is very much like the door to personal happiness and healing. Thinking woman in reverse. The fool in reverse. Blocked. Cannot take the leap. Cannot step through this portal. Literally. The fool has come out in reverse and it fell out on the door to personal healing and happiness. Just like that. But we're looking at the thinking woman in reverse. And so that to me is confirmation that without this feminine coming into balance, this individual or you will not be able to take the leap through this portal. Thinking woman in reverse. Woo! Uh -oh. Uh -oh. All right, first of all, you or this person needs to chill because you will be able to, regardless of the circumstances you're facing right now, you will be able to cross through this portal, but you have to meet these circumstances first. You have to meet these requirements first. That's it. Some of you are freaking out about your circumstances, thinking that because of how they currently are in this moment or whenever you're, it is you're watching this reading or whenever this resonates for you, you're concerned that because of your circumstances, 
the way they are currently, you will never be able to make it to your goal. You will never be able to take the leap of faith. And that's just not true. The reason why you are not able to take the leap of faith, you are not able to cross this portal is literally because you have not met the, the energetic requirements. And it's not a hierarchical thing in terms or in based on any sort of morality. Morality is subjective, period, 100%. You can argue with me all you want. I will never, I, I, well, I won't say that. I, I, I do not, I, I see morality as subjective. We're not talking about morality here. We're talking about literal energetic signature, energetic vibration, energetic resonance. What are you energetically attuned with? That is what you will receive. And what, if you are looking to cross this portal, cross into this portal, cross through this gateway of personal happiness and healing, you need to bring this feminine energy in balance. You cannot cross into, you cannot exist past that gateway if this is not in balance, period. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You can be as morally corrupt or saintly as you want to be. If you don't have some balance here in terms of this energy level, you will never cross that portal, period. So chill. You're going to make it there if you meet these requirements. The sun with judgment. And judgment was pushed off the table. Albeit timidly enough. But it was. Someone is kind of... Okay, what I'm hearing is someone is releasing judgment. And... Um, I was just talking, oh, wow, okay. I just mentioned this in the personal reading I did right before this session, but um, I was having this argument with myself this morning, and so I'm interested, I, ooh, I might be opening up a can of worms right now, <laughs> but I'm interested, I'll share it with you guys. I was talking about, with myself, I was having a, a conversation with myself when I woke up this morning, as I was going about my morning, about the difference between judgment and discernment. And I was making an argument to myself, albeit it may have been very egoically. However, I'm, I was legitimately trying to make an argument to myself that I feel there is a level of difference between judgment and discernment. I feel like when we say, as humans, I guess, when we say judgment, when you're judging something or judging someone, that can be fairly negative. That can cross into realms of deciding one's fate outside of you that you really know nothing about. You're, you, you, you don't know their experiences in the appropriate manner to make those types of judgments about other people and their lives, we'll say. Whereas discernment, for me at least, if I'm being discerning, I am making a judgment call, but I'm making that judgment call based on my safety. Okay, does interacting with this situation based on the judgment that I make of what I see in this situation, does interaction, my interaction with this situation help to enhance my safety, my well-being, have no effect on my well-being and, and safety, or negatively affect my well-being and safety? If it starts to fall into the negative effect, then I have every right to say no thank you. No ma'am, no sir, I am good, thank you very much. But that does not mean that I am judging their character or I have a right to judge because ultimately I'm still human. So yeah, I'm fucking still in some case. <laughs> Yikes, Eric, chill. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like, even though I, in my human self, am fallible and find myself slipping at times, it doesn't mean I have a right at that point to judge their character, to judge the right or wrongness of the situation. That's none of my business, really. I've done all I needed to do. I have ensured my safety and well-being. That's as far as that needs to go. That, for me, is the difference between judgment and discernment. And that here is what I feel like someone is also going through because that is what I see reflected in the Queen of Swords. If the Queen of Swords, which I see this thinking woman as, if the Queen of Swords is upright, she's discerning. Period, point blank. Okay? It is what it is. It either flies or it doesn't. <laughs> And that's where we get the difference between the king and the queen. Because it's not about a debate. It can either fly or it can't. <laughs> you want to get into making it fly, and if that's possible, go talk to the king. But when it comes to me, it can either fly or it can't. Discerning. Judgment is when you start hacking and slashing and cutting people apart and ripping apart their character and their whatever. 
their character. That's judgment. Well, that's the negative side of judgment. That's a toxic, twisted side of judgment. I'm feeling very specifically, whether this is a man that is watching this video right now, or this is a woman, or maybe another man that is connected to another man or a masculine energy that is finding this energy within their experience with their mother, their early experiences with their mother, and is starting to find how that has shaped and colored both their view of and their expression of feminine energy. Whether this person wants to admit it or not, everybody expresses masculine and feminine energies in some ways, albeit th that dominance dynamic differs, right? Everybody does. And someone's starting to figure it out now. And that is changing the game. That is changing the whole circumstance. All of the circumstances. What I heard initially was that is changing the whole circumstances. But that is not proper grammar. But they wanted me to say it that way. So that means something for somebody. Anything else for this thinking woman? In re yes. Ooh, that's enough. Oh, gosh. That's enough right there. But let me tell you, it's a lot, man. Wow. This is... Okay, so this is a theme... This is a real legitimate theme right now for a lot of people collectively because um, this is stuff that I've been thinking about and talking about all day, whether it was just me in my, my head in my meditations in the morning or me doing this reading that I did previously, previous to this one, a personal reading. But the chariot is here. Hold on. All right, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I got to pause for a second. I got to collect myself. Hold on. <laughs> okay, I'm getting a download because this is a closing message here. All right. And we're... Yeah, okay. Oh, wow. Yes. So this is also tied to um, uh, the masculine feminine reading or you could call it twin flame reading if you want that i just did for, for patreon the one i did previous the last one reading i did right before on patreon right before i'm doing this one now um that there is a masculine here masculine perspective a masculine dynamic some uh, masculine individual whatever that is learning what true healed, whole, non-toxic feminine energy is and is of the emotional maturity, emotional foundation, emotional um, um, uh, stability to be able to approach this lesson. The King of Cups, the Chariot, the Temperance, and the Queen of Pentacles. The Queen of Pentacles right here, that's that mother energy. Or also, that's that feminine energy. But it is a feminine energy that is willing to work with others, whatever that means. Because this thinking woman in reverse is so uncooperative, it's so egoic does what she wants, when she wants, how she wants, doesn't give a fuck how she handles it or how she hurts other people, maims other people in the process is what I'm hearing. And also, those of you who have been watching me for years, I have always said the Queen of Pentacles and the Queen of Swords, in my mind, are best fucking friends. Best friends, girl. They're so alike. They're so able, they're, they, they, and, and, and for me, their energies resonate or harmonize most with each other, strongest with each other in their ability to detach from a situation. I mean, obviously the Queen of Swords can detach in an instant. She's an air sign. Of course she can, but the Queen of Pentacles, man, ooh. She can detach, but then she also has some sort of emotional awareness within her, whereas the queen, that the Queen of Swords does not. So when it comes to the Queen of Pentacles, there is a level of being able to detach, but also emotionally not being able to detach. Sometimes. Hmm? No, I just heard often. <laughs> okay. But I kind of regress there. I say all that to say this Queen of Pentacles represents the upright version of this caring, compassionate, but also discerning energy. I mean, if anybody's going to be discerning, if it's not the Queen of Swords, it's definitely the Queen of Pentacles, man. 
Oh, honey. The Queen of Pentacles sometimes actually may trump the Queen of Swords in her, in her discernment. Oh, yes. Because the Queen of Swords, Pentacles is practical, is practicality, is earth, is physicality, the Queen of Pentacles. So, yeah. If she's going to flourish, if flourish, if she's going to fuck flourishing, if she's going to maintain herself, she's going to need to be discerning, right? She's the, okay, the queen of discernment. Hallelujah. I hear you. Okay. But whatever masculine individual or part of you or someone that we are talking about here, they are having the emotional wherewithal to get their act together is what I'm feeling with this chariot energy of get their alignment right, of to show up properly, to pursue, work towards, work towards holding and subsequently hold the alignment that is proper to what is truly in balance for them. Temperance to the Queen of Pentacles. And it's all about getting this feminine aspect, whether this is externally to you at this point or it's just internally for you at this point. This, this session, this reading is all about getting that internal balance with the masculine and the feminine. But right now the focus is on the feminine. And don't get me wrong, once you have sufficiently turned this part upright, there is still going to still need to be some balancing here between the, queen, uh, between the feminine and the masculine. Okay? But this is one part of getting that started. This is the this is getting that started. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm going to take this other deck. I'm going to shuffle it. Clear it out. All right. And I want to get advice on that masculine energy. Since we've described the situation now, right? We have we know that what we're talking about here. What is the advice? Okay. Two more shuffles then. One. And two. Okay. What's the advice here? Okay. Compromise. You're going to need to compromise with the feminine. And she's going to need to compromise with you. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> okay, this is a two-way street, but compromise is needed here. You have three cards. Uh, one, the first card came out face down. Four, but, the, but, but then two more came out face up. First, it was the four of pentacles. Stubbornness or rooted, grounded, stability, okay. Four of Pentacles, the first thing I thought, felt was some sort of stubbornness. Something that could be, if not fully released or work towards released, at least, like work towards full release, at least like lightened up on a bit. In order, to <clears throat> in order to reach this balance, Two of Cups was next. But this is, ah, ah ha, ha, the Four of Cups. Yeah, this has been the topic for today. So the Four of Cups is speaking to how someone is starting to recognize within the Three of Cups below them Again, this, this always looks like a masculine energy to me initially, but it also could be feminine, all right? But what, anyway, this individual is recognizing, at least in theory, could be, should be, recognizing dissatisfaction, dissatisfaction disa discontentment in this Three of Cups below them. Unfulfilling. Something is unfulfilling. And I do like to liken the Three of Cups down here to the Three of Cups card, which to me sometimes can be a hive mind mentality or a, a, a way or ways that people, individuals connect with each other, but it's from, from an emotional basis. And often those emotional bases are quite fragile, okay? But someone is recognizing discontent in this Three, three of Cups below them. And God, or the universe, the spirit, is handing them the fourth one. 
another one, a different one, that either could complete this four to make it whole again, or just make it whole, or could lead them to something completely new and quite fulfilling. But you see, think about it this way, you guys, because what I'm seeing now is the progression here. So where do you go after the Four of Cups? You've accepted this one cup in the Four of Cups, we'll say. Okay, you've made that progress. And now by the time you reach the Five of Cups, there's yet another cup. But in the Five of Cups, either remember or if you're unfamiliar with it, the Five of Cups is depicted as somebody standing looking forlorn, their back is to you, head down in seeming sorrow. It's a dark and gloomy scene on some dry, barren land. Looks kind of like sand, could be, a, you know, kind of like sand. There's like a, a, like a river in front of them with a bridge across that river. And off in the distance, there's a, a stone castle. But this person is standing in the foreground, looking down, sullen, okay, with three cups spilled out next to them. And they're all sad about these three cups. But behind them, what's not within their vision, unlike the castle off in the distance and these three cups that have spilled out in front of them, what's behind them is the two of cups. And in order to reach this two of cups, that is standing fully full and erect right behind you or this person in the five of cups, in order to, re to reach those last two that are behind them, these three needed to spill out. And that's what the Five of Cups would represent, that sorrow, that sadness, that grieving period of losing all of that, but having this, gaining this behind you. From there, you go to the Six of Cups, happiness, family, blah, 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 nostalgia. Woo, woo, woo. Okay, great. All right. But where are we right now? We are here getting this in line, getting this alignment together. This Queen of Swords, thinking woman in reverse, meeting it with love and compassion, commitment, discernment, evolving it into this, this Queen of Pentacles energy. This masculine is going through this. And your advice here, masculine or individual, whomever this is for, your advice here is that something's gotta give. At the very least, I'm feeling here that with, if this Four of Pentacles does not mean fully releasing something, it at the very least means lightening up on something. The pressure has to be relieved off of something in order for some semblance of this Two of Cups energy to start creeping in. Okay, if this is what you truly want, you wouldn't be watching this and resonating with this if you didn't want this. So maybe someone needs to I don't know, the sun, awareness, see it, shine a light on it, look at it, see it for what it truly is. So what do I want to say? <laughs> Anything else? Justice. Ooh, justice is at the bottom of the deck. Hey, balance, harmony, karma is what I heard. But karma in the sense that you reap what you sow. I mean, if you don't want to reap what you have been sowing here, why would you continue to sow it? Checks and balances, karma, balance. If you want something, to, I mean, also seeing Seven of Pentacles energy, which was the bottom of the deck, which was a big number. There you go. There's circling right back to seven. Of course, justice here in the tarot deck. This is card number 11. But why were we circling back to seven? Justice. Karma. Reap what you saw. Oh, seven of pentacles. Right. Right, 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 right. Right. Okay. Hey, look, what I'm getting from this right now, you guys, the advice here is you're just gonna have to do it. There is no other way to cross this portal if this is not in balance. This is purely objective. I mean, this judgment call is purely, 
purely, good God, purely objective. Look, there's the Three of Cups. Underneath justice is the Three of Cups. This Three of Cups energy needs to spill out. And this Three of Cups energy for somebody here is translating into the way that you or this feminine energy relates to people. And whether that is an, it is an expression within you that has also attracted other representations of it in other people because you outwardly express it, or maybe you don't outwardly, outwardly express it, and yet you harbor some sort of attachment to, the, to this type of energy to the point where it's constantly showing up in your life. Or you have some sort of unresolved issue with this, 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 this thinking woman in reverse. You have some sort of unresolved issue with this type of energy that is causing some sort of recurring circumstance to show up in your life over and over and over. You're in the process of getting rid of this. But in order to get rid of this, you have to make a judgment, a discerning judgment call on this Three of Cups. And that discerning is three steps. It's a, <laughs> The shoe has dropped. Well, there's another shoe to drop. Yikes. But this was an accent, okay? There is one of three ways that this type of energy could work out. This discernment meter has three settings. Neutral is normal. High, low, okay? Neutral is, in terms of this discernment meter, neutral is this situation that I am choosing to get myself involved with neither harms nor benefits my well health and well-being. Okay, so it's neutral on the discernment meter. Low on the discernment meter would represent, I'm seeing green, okay? You know what? No. Low is red. Low is negative on the discernment meter, meaning that this situation has now officially crossed in the, into the realm of being fully and completely harmful to my health and well-being. And in terms of that, as such, I retain the right to cut all ties with the situation. Neutral. Neither yay nor nay. Okay. High on the discernment meter is this actually benefits my health and well-being. And yes, this would be the green side. And yes, I choose to stay involved or get involved with this situation. That's it. No reading between the lines, no picking people apart, no reading people for filth, no read telling people about themselves. No, nope, none of that. No. Why is that necessary? If the situation is harmful to you, all you have to do is remove yourself from it. That's it. One of three settings. Low. Neutral, high, on the benefit discernment meter. On the benefiting discernment meter. On the beneficial, ben yeah. you get it. Six of Wands, this is where your victory lies. Ooh, to the Emperor, to the Queen of Cups, to the Queen, wow. Mm. Queen of Cups. So, there is some emotional healing that absolutely needs to be done here. Again, this is a mother, or with a mother, or with feminine energy, something like that. Okay. We're going to stop there. That's enough. I hope this was helpful to you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am available for private readings, but I'm taking them slowly. Um, because they take a lot of energy and I just want to make sure that I have uh, the right reserves to handle all my commitments. So I am available for private readings, but they may not happen in the snappy manner you may be used to <laughs> if you've been following me long enough. <laughs> okay. I love you guys. Uh, check out Patreon too. This is what we do every week, once or twice a week, leaning towards twice. Link in the description box below, as well as information on how to get a reading from me. I love you. Bye.